was a convention on the Holy Spirit. Boy, what kind of convention is that? That's got to be good. Amen. That's the place to be. And I remember we got there. We went up in the hotel. We were way up high. I don't remember which floor. I don't know if my wife remembers anymore or not. She said no. But it is high up. I looked out the window, and there's a parade coming down the street there in New Orleans. And there's a big banner in that parade. And it says, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Praise God. What, what did that? And Scott Wesley Brown was there, the whole convention. And he sang, and him and Steve Green. And I'm just thinking, I don't know, I haven't researched it, but that may have been when that song was given to him. You know, that we are the body of Christ. Because, I mean, here we are. There's Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, Catholics, you name it. But there are people that's been spirit-filled. You mean God fills the Catholics with His Spirit? God will fill anybody with His Spirit if they'll ask Him for it. Amen? <laughs> so it was a special time. That's still a special song to me. I think that's why. Because it, it just uh, brings back things that we need. I need to be reminded of. You know what I mean? Don't you know we need to be reminded of things, don't we? So praise the Lord. We're glad you all are here today to help us praise the Lord and let Him minister to us as we minister to Him. We're going to look over Deuteronomy chapter 30 at a verse to start with Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. And uh, we want to focus on this today about making our mind up. Choose you this day. You see, God's given us all a free will to make choices. In fact, I think you realize it, you made a choice this morning when you got up, you chose to come to church, amen? amen. So uh, our life is really filled with opportunity to make choices. And uh, it, it certainly, the sooner we learn who to consult, in our choice making, the better off we're going to be. Can you all say amen to that? Now, we've all been there and made wrong choices, but, uh, you know, life is filled with learning opportunities too, isn't it? And uh, my granddad, what did he say? It seems like it takes a lifetime to learn how to live one. Well, I think there's some truth in that. I think we could learn sooner, but a lot of us are what we call what? Hard-headed maybe? Slow learners. What about that one? But anyway, we got some good news. God is for you and not against you. And God will help us if we will learn to acknowledge Him and uh, recognize Him. You remember Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. But verse 6, In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. See, we have to practice acknowledging God in all our ways, don't we? If we want His direction, we've got to practice our acknowledging. But in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, we're talking about choices today, or we're talking about making the right choice, or choose you this day. This is another day we need to make sure we're making the right choice. Amen? Deuteronomy 30, 19, he says this, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore. Now, what do you do when you see the word therefore? We look and see what it's there for. Therefore, choose life. Why? So that both you and your seed may live. Now, how many times have we said this and heard this? The choices I make not, not only affect me, but they affect my family and others around me. Amen? Generations to come. So God says, I've set this before you. In other words, He's given us a free will, and He loved us so much that He didn't want to make robots out of us, but He wanted to give us a choice. He, he wanted a family that would choose Him. Right. Amen? And that's what humanity's all about. That's what redemption's all about. That's what this world is all about. If you're today, if for some reason you don't know where you came from, you don't know where you're going either, 
or why you're here, you're here for a purpose and God's give you an opportunity to make the right choice and the right choice is Him. So we can learn to make the right choice and choose Him and He will honor that and He will lead us and He will keep His promises that He's promised us in His Word, won't He? You remember what the prophet Jeremiah said, 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. He's got plans for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a good expected end. Is that good? Well, we have to choose Him to get that plan. Is that right? So thank God we can choose Him and He's given us a choice of life and death. Blessing and cursing. Well, you know, some people just by ignorance or just not knowing any better, they choose cursing. You know, we live in a world that people do a lot of cursing. It's just normal, natural. But no, God wants us to be the blesser, don't He? He wants us to be blessed because He's blessed us. But we have to acknowledge that and find out that, you know what, Galatians 3.13 tells us Christ has redeemed us from the curse to the blessing. Read Galatians chapter 3. Oh, praise God. It'll, it'll tell you a lot of things we need to see. So I wanted us to look at 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings 18. First of all, I wanted to read verse 21, then we'll go back and read some more. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21. And Elijah came to all the people, and he said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, then follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people, the people answered him not a word. They're still halting between two. They still got their mind mixed up. Instead of having their mind made up, they got it mixed up. Which one's better, a mixed up mind or a made up mind? <laughs> the contemporary English version in that same verse says this, How much longer will you try to have things both ways? <laughs> wow, isn't that a good way to put it? Now, you know, like I say, we, we don't point fingers because at some point in time we've been there and, and, and I don't know, maybe, maybe somebody there today, we're still trying to live in both worlds. And we know we are in this world, but we're not to be of this world. Jesus said you're in the world, but not of the world. If we're going to be like Jesus, and by the way, what does the word Christian mean? Christ-like. It means to be like Christ. Now, there are people in this world, and I know you know it too, that claim to be Christians, but they sure don't act like Christ. And so the two don't line up to me, do they you? To be a Christian is to be like Christ, a follower of Jesus Christ. And if I'm going to follow Him, I need to know more about Him, where He's going, so I can follow with Him and where He's been and what He's done. So we see here... How much longer will you try to have it both ways? <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, it just don't work that way. It don't work that way. I can't have it both ways. An easy to read version says, you must decide what you are going to do. How long will you keep jumping from one side to the other? <laughs> now, isn't, isn't, that, isn't that a good one? Now, we live in a world, and especially the times that uh, we're facing now and going through, uh, oh, there's always been great temptation. Uh, there's always been an attack on God's people, hadn't there? And, and you know what? The devil don't quit. He don't give up. I tell you what, if we could learn anything from the devil, that would be good. It would be that he's not a quitter. That would be the only thing we'd want to learn from him that would be worth any count at all is don't quit because he don't. 
But we also find out more about the, when we get into the truth of God's word, we find out that he's already a defeated foe. And all he can do is roar like a lion, but the Bible says he, he runs about like a roaring lion, but he's not one. He just tries to sound like one. And he tries to call our bluff, don't he? Uh, but he wants to get us sidetracked, and he wants us to halt between two opinions, and he wants us to try to live both ways. Oh, it's okay to go to church on Sunday, but, you know, you can do what you want to on Monday. <laughs> or you can live like the devil on Saturday, just, just show up on Sunday. You know, both ways? And, uh, you know, that happens, doesn't it? But that's not God's way of making the choice that he's given us to choose. He said choose life or death. I've set before you life and death. And he tells us to choose life, doesn't he? In other words, you can't have it both ways. Well, what's the, what's the popular saying? We've heard it as a kid growing up. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Well, I thought you could, didn't you? <laughs> we sure don't, we don't want to eat the devil's cake anyway. It's bad news. Now, uh, you must decide what you're going to do. How long will you keep jumping from one side to the other? We know there's people jump from one side to the other, but it don't have to be that way, does it? So we got to choose this day. we got to make the choice, don't we? Now, the good news Bible says this. How much longer will it take you to make up your minds? <laughs> what do you think about that? How much longer, you know... You ever seen somebody that just wants to take so long about making, you got your mind made up yet? How much longer will it take you to make up your mind? Are we going to serve God? Or are we going to serve the God of this world, you know? And then God's Word translation says, How long will you try to have it both ways? Well, that's a good question we can ask ourselves and just make sure we got the right answer. Can you say amen to that? So let's look back there in 1 Kings. Well, that was verse uh, 21. Let's go ahead and look in 1 Kings 18 and uh, read verse 1 and 2 and some more. 1 Kings 18, 1. It came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, show yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to show himself to Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. Now we see here there's been a shortage of rain. It's, it's dried up. It's dry. There's no rain. And there's a famine. And so we look over in uh, verse 17 now. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, are you the one that troubles Israel? And he answered and uh, said, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and you have followed Baal. Now listen, this is this the way it's still, the true picture is still today. The, the people that are against God, that don't know God, and they're so ignorant they don't even know they're of their father, the devil. They want to blame Christians for the trouble. <laughs> Have you noticed? It was that way there. Uh, Ahab wanted to blame Elijah for the trouble. But Elijah made it plain to Ahab what caused the trouble, didn't he? He said in 17, uh, 18, he said, you have, I'm not troubled, Israel, but you have. You and your father's house have troubled Israel because you have forsaken the commands, or you could say the word of the Lord, and you have followed Balaam or other false gods. See, forsaking God's word will always cause trouble. <laughs> it does. It does. It does. Look at your neighbor and say, it does. It will. And, uh, but, you know, the way the devil is, he'll always try to put the blame game on you. And when you bring on the trouble, 
he'll try to cause you to blame somebody else for it. Now, we're seeing a lot of that going on in our political world, aren't we? I mean, the troublemakers are putting the blame on somebody else that didn't bring the trouble. And it's true here in the Word of God. See, people haven't changed, God hasn't changed, and the devil hasn't changed. But praise God, we can change. I think it's David Ingalls wrote a song about that. You can change if you want to. You can change. God will help you. See, you got to want to. You want to? You want to? You got to ask yourself this question. Do I want to? <laughs> People do what they want to. We all been there and done that and still do. Amen? You know, if you really want to do something bad enough, you'll do it, won't you? What you do, our actions speak louder than words. Our actions really portray our want to. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the prophet Elijah told Ahab what, what the problem was. Here, I'll tell you where the trouble's coming from. You've neglected God and His commandments. And any time you forsake God and His Word, you're going to bring on trouble. You know? Well, what happened in what it 60 was, Wilson, 63? The ball got dropped in 63. They wouldn't let children pray in school. Was it 62? 62, okay. You know, Carmen had a song about that. Uh, yeah, the ball got dropped in 62. They wouldn't let children pray in school. So they kicked God out of school, and now they want to know what's caused all this trouble in schools. Yeah. You know? Ain't had enough sense to realize it's because we kicked God out, you know? And anything else, kick, trying to kick him out of everything else, you know. Well, it's just what happened here. Ahab was trying to blame the man of God, but the man of God said, Hey, it ain't my fault. You're the one who kicked God out. You're the one who forsook his uh, commandments. So uh, let's see what else he said there in verse 19. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel and the Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, with, which eat at Jezebel's table. How I many of you know Jezebel, a wicked woman? <laughs> Wasn't she? So Ahab, verse 20, sent on to all the children of Israel, and he gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. In verse 21, Elijah came unto all the people, and he said, How long will you halt between two opinions? If the Lord be God, then follow him. If it be Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Verse 22, Then said Elijah to the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. You notice what he told them to do. Uh, Verse 23, let them therefore give us two bullocks and, and let them cho choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood and put it on the fire or put no fire under it. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on the wood and put no fire under it and we'll call on the name of the Lord your gods and I will call on the name of the Lord my God and the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, Okay, sounds good to me. It's well spoken. They finally come into agreement there, didn't they? Let's do it. Well, what happened? They did it. And uh, Elijah was, you know, talking to him about the prophets of Baal. Uh, they couldn't get their God to wake up and do anything, could they? Verse 27 says, It came to pass at the noontime that Elijah mocked them, and he said, Cry louder. He's a God. He's talking. Uh, or he's after something, pursuing something. Or he's in a, on a journey. Or maybe, maybe he's asleep. <laughs> How many of you know what the psalmist said? He that keeps Israel never slumbers nor sleeps. Our God is always alert and active, watching over His Word to perform it. Jeremiah 1. 12, amen. 
Oh, maybe he's asleep. That's what Elijah told me. They couldn't get their God to do anything, could they? And uh, so verse 28 said they cried aloud. They, I mean, they cried so loud, and they started cutting themselves. I mean, they're trying to get their God's attention, aren't they? Cut themselves with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. It came to pass 29. When the midday was past, they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, and there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded. They didn't get no response. <laughs> Well, verse 30, Elijah said to other people, Come now unto me. And all the people came to Elijah, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Because, see, they'd been serving other gods, hadn't they? Verse 31, of Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tri uh, tribes of sons of Jacob. And uh, unto the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And so, verse 32, with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And so he put the wood in order and he put the bullocks uh, in, in the pieces. And, and he, uh, he said, fill four, in verse 33, fill four barrels with water, pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And then he went on to say, do it the second time, do it the third time. And verse 35, and the water ran round about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the ninth, or at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice in verse 36, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant. And I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me that these people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back again. So then verse 38, The fire of the Lord fell on, on the altar. It consumed the burnt sacrifice, the wood, the stones, the dust, licked up the water that was in the trench, and when all the people saw it, what did they do? They fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Well, they changed their mind, didn't they? They quit halting between two opinions. You know, and it, I tell you, we're living in days and times when we've just got to have a made-up mind. Can you say amen to that? Because there are going to be circumstances come our way that's going to try to pull you and cause you to go astray. Have you noticed that lately? But we're just going to have to have a made-up mind. We're going to have to have be what set like a flint. We got to we got to just know our God and and trust Him, no matter what the devil's trying to do or what things look like is going on. Oh, especially in the world we're living in, it doesn't matter what it looks like. God is still there. He's on the throne, and if we'll continue to be faithful to Him, He's going to see to it that his faithfulness always comes through, isn't he? I like what he said in Deuteronomy 7, 9. He said, for you to know, therefore, the Lord your God. Well, first of all, we need to know him as our God. Know, therefore, the Lord your God. He is God. That's what, that's what Elijah proved here, wasn't it? Know, therefore, the Lord your God. He's God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant. What does he keep? covenant and mercy to those that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. See, God wants us to know that. He wants us to be solidified in the knowledge of the truth of who he is. D Daniel eleven thirty two. 32, Jill mentioned it a while ago, the people that do know their God will be strong and do exploits. So what does it take to be strong? Know God. Thank God we can get to know Him. Aren't we glad we can get to know Him? Well, that's what His plan's all about. That's the choice we have to make. We have to choose Him. And we have to choose that no matter what's going on in our world, God's still God. His Word's still true. He's always faithful. 
He keeps his promises, doesn't he? He's a promise keeper. And I'm glad to know he does. Well, somebody might say, well, I've tried that. It just doesn't seem to be working. Well, nowhere in the Word did he tell us to try it. He just said to do it. So a, a, a trier gives up, but a doer don't. <laughs> yeah, but it just looks like it ought to be coming through now. Well, you know, you heard the story about Brother Keith uh, Wednesday night. For 10 years, they waited on the, on the Bentley. And boy, it was a move of God where they got that thing, wasn't it? And you know, I, I know sometimes we, we all can think this way. Well, but look, that took 10 years. Well, you know what? Have you noticed? Time is passing anyway. Did you know it's passing swiftly? Randy, I'm older than I used to be. Have you noticed? <laughs> I mean, you look back and think, my, my, I didn't know that many years have come and gone, but they've come and they've gone, and we're still here, and we, st we just need to live by what God said, live by faith. And so to live by faith, we got to know Him, don't we? See, faith is not just believing God can. It's knowing that He will, and we won't know that He will until we know His will. <laughs> and what is God's will? His word is His will. This is simple. We should be able to see this. Anybody, anybody out there should see this. I remember years ago, my dad gave me uh, His will. It said the uh, the the what did it say the, the the last will and testament of Lovell Hall. And it was just words on paper. But you know what it was? It let me know His will. These are words on paper. But you know what else they are? They let me know my Father God's will. These are basic instructions before leaving earth. And it also gives us the understanding and the wisdom and knowledge that we need to make a choice and which choice to make. And regardless of what it looks like, we must choose God. Is that right? Well, praise God we can. See, we got to start seeing God as our God. He's my God. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul first thirsts for thee. Psalm 63, I read that this morning before we started church. He's my God. Amen. Is he your God? See, that, that's the choice you have to make. I had to make it. Everybody has to make it. You can either choose life by choosing God or choose God and choose life. Or you can choose the ways of the world and that's choosing death. You know, and bottom line, when it's all said and done, it's not that God brought the bad things on you. It's the choices that we made, isn't it? I heard somebody tell me this one time. See, religion will... Religion will try to hold people in bondage. Religion will get you confused, and that's where the devil wants you to stay. I had this religious person tell me this one time. I won't mention which, which religion they were associated and connected with. He said, do you believe a, a good God would send somebody to hell? I said, absolutely not. I said, you got that right. He is good. But you also got that right. He won't send anybody to hell. But I'll just tell you how good he is. If you want to go there by rejecting his son Jesus, he'll let you. Boy, he didn't know what else to say about that. See, religion wants to keep you confused. Religion wants to make you think, first of all, uh, the devil who... who uh, how many know the devil goes to church? How many know the devil's religious? He's just religiously wrong, isn't he? But the devil will try his best to convince people of all kinds of non-truths and lies. And he'll bring all, you know, fabricated things. And, and that's the problem in the world today. People are listening to the wrong spirit. And we need to be listening to our Creator, His Spirit, the Spirit of God. But uh, re religion 
or will try to convince people that he don't exist. The devil will try to convince people that he don't exist. See, if he can convince people that he's not real, well, then he's already got you, hadn't he? Yeah, have you ever heard somebody say, oh, no, I don't believe there's a real devil? See, he's already got your number. He's already got you where he wants you. Have you ever heard somebody say, no, I don't believe there's a hell? You know, regardless of what kind of excuse they come up with. Yeah, well, they wouldn't be, a good God wouldn't send somebody to hell. So I don't believe there's a hell. Well, you know what? Just for, uh, truth of the matter is, if somebody says they don't believe there's a hell, that does not change the truth that there is a hell. The rich man, he didn't think any, anything about hell either, but the Bible says one day he died, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. Well, that's going to be a sad surprise, isn't it? But you don't, have to, you don't have to be surprised. You can find out the truth in the last will and testament <laughs> in God's Word, which is His will. Amen? So uh, we can get to know the truth. And uh, Jesus said, if you'll continue, remember John 8, 31, 32, if you'll continue in my Word, see, the key is con to continue. Uh, I know we've looked at this before and made s statements about this. We have a lot, maybe a lot of uh, beginners or starters. Uh, how many of you know, like if you're running track, you know, you can get on the starting line and when the gun goes off, you can start. But if you're going to win that race, you're going to have to continue. You can't just get halfway and quit, can you? See, uh, God, God likes for people to begin. He wants people to start, but He's also more focused on the finish, isn't He? So it's not just starting. It's starting and building a determination and being fully persuaded that we're going to continue on come hell or high water because hell's already defeated anyway. Jesus has already defeated our enemy, hadn't He? And so we're going to keep on going. Well, we can do that, can't we? Now, you remember uh, the week we were talking about over there said, uh, how long will you halt between two opinions? They, had, they didn't have their mind made up. You remember what James says about that, James 1.8? A double-minded man is unstable in what? All, how many? All his ways. Well, I like what Joshua said. How many of you know Joshua was the one that led the children of Israel across the Jordan River into the land of promise? Uh, Joshua, by the way, was also one, him and Caleb had their mind made up. They had a made up mind. They're going to serve the Lord. They had a made up mind. They're going to believe God and His Word. They had their mind made up. Let's go on and take the land. We're well able to take it. But ten spies that went with them came back and said, No, we can't do it. We look like grasshoppers in their sight. You know, like they think they got close enough to them to hear them say, You look like a grasshopper. <laughs> it, it was their image, wasn't it? It was the wrong imaginations. So therefore their mind was confused. Well, anyway, Joshua and Caleb, they knew we can take it. So they had to wait for 40 years for that generation to die off and so then they could rise up and lead God's children into the promised land over the Jordan River. And how'd they get across it? On dry land. How come? Because he's a way maker. But Joshua said this in Joshua 24, 15. And if it seems evil unto you, to serve the Lord. And you know, there are actually people that would say that. It seems evil to them to serve the Lord. Can, can you believe people can be that? Yeah, they can. If it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house... As for me and my house, 
You want to say that today? Let's say that today. As for me and my house, we will to serve the Lord. Praise God. Now, you'll have opposition come against you when you make that decision. Did anybody ever notice when you first got saved, the enemy really started focusing on you more? See, before you got saved, he was already in his family. He already had you doing what you're supposed to be doing. But when you got born again, he, he started paying more attention to you. Boy, we can't let them continue. We've got to talk them out of this. And that's what he would try to do. <laughs> Anything of God in God's Word, any of His promises that God's promised us, the devil is out to talk you out of it. But the Spirit of God is out to get you into it, praise God, and to get it into you. Isn't that good news? So as for me and my house, what are we going to do today? Serve the Lord. That serve, the word serve also carries with it the meaning of worship the Lord. Well, God says, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and Him only shalt thou serve, didn't He? Well, praise God, we can do that. Aren't you glad? So we can choose Him, and we choose God by choosing His Word to be obedient to His Word. And how many of you found out more and more, when you choose God's Word, you're choosing life. And you remember Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, My son, he said this in Proverbs 4, 20, My son. See, God's the Father. He's talking to us as His sons. My son, pay attention to my word. Attend to my word. Incline your ear to what I say. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. And then after He tells us what to do, He tells us why we're to do it. Why does He say do it? For my word is life. To those that find them. And, and what else? Health to what? All their flesh. I'm telling you what, like never before, of course it's always been this way, but it seems like sometimes even more. We need life in this world and we need health, don't we? There's a lot of sickness, sick things. I mean, you know, spiritual sickness, physical sickness, mental, mental sickness, all kinds of sickness going on. But God's Word is health to the sick. Well, how do we get it? Well, we have to pay attention to God's Word, don't we? We have to realize He's our Father and we have to become His Son because He's a talking to the Son. My Son, attend to my Word. Amen. Well, praise God, aren't you glad we can do that? We can make the choice. See, when our founding fathers, when they, when they presented the uh, Declaration of Independence and the, uh, you know, all the declaration they wrote said that we, God, we were made by uh, our Creator and uh, created equal by one Creator and... Uh, with certain inalienable rights. Among these was what? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And so, thank God, we've, had, uh, we've been made, created by our Creator God, haven't we? And uh, He's given us this right to life. But yet we have to choose it, don't we? And we have to make the choice, make up our mind. But we can do it. Can we do it? Yes, we can. But what if it just doesn't feel like it's working? It's working. It's working. It's working. You know, a little song. It's good. Sometimes little songs are good to keep you going, aren't they? It's working. It's working. The Word of God is working. It's working. It's working. The Word of God is working. It's working. It's working. Working night and day. It's working in my body to drive sickness away. It's working anywhere we, we work it. Working, work, working in my family. Amen. Working in my family. Isn't that right? What pleases God? Faith. What does faith do? Faith calls things that are not as though they were. 
you look at situations and it looks like it's not working. What does faith do? It calls it working. How come? By the Word of God. Creative power. And so, you might be here today and not, might need to be do, doing some calling. Amen? Be like God, Romans 4, 17. God calls things that be not as though they were. He calls them the way He wants them. He don't call it the way it is. If we call it the way it is, then we're still going to have it the way it is. But if we call it the way God calls it, we call it the way we want it to be, then uh, we'll see the Word of God change the circumstances, won't it? Praise God. Well, praise God. There might be somebody here today wanting to call some things. I'm sure we all need to make some calls. Might be some things we're facing, looking at, that uh, we want to be changed. God's creative power, God's Word is still creating our world, isn't it? Praise God. Did you, did you have something? If you're watching today with YouTube or, or uh, Facebook and you don't know Jesus, this God that we're talking about, you don't want to leave this world without knowing Him. So we want to give you an opportunity. The Bible says whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So we want to encourage you today, right now, if you just call on Him, right now, pray with us. We're going to lead you in a prayer, and you can call on Him. He'll come into your life, come into your heart. He'll change your life, and He'll set you on the straight and narrow way, and He'll help you to go that way every day. So just repeat after me if you don't know Jesus. Father God, come to you today in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you that Jesus died on the cross for me. He became sin so I could be made righteous. He took stripes on his back so I could be healed and whole. I accept you right now, Lord Jesus, as my Savior, my God, my healer, my protector, my provider, my helper. I believe I receive it in Jesus' name. I ask you to forgive me for anything I've wronged you about. And come into my heart and life in Jesus' name. And so if you prayed that prayer right now, we believe you got born again. We'd like to hear from you. Let, let us know. Uh, send us a line at P.O. Box 1557 or Facebook uh, or our website. And let us know that you accepted Jesus. We'll pray with you and pray for you. Amen. So thank God for the new birth. Thank you for joining us live today. Praise the Lord. Until next time, we'll see you at Facebook and YouTube later. Amen.